Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter video. And today we are back with another episode of High Rank Hunters. This is the series where I sit down and have a chance to chat to other awesome members of the Monster Hunter community, whether that be content creators, Twitch streamers, speedrunners, artists, and more, and find out more about them, why they love Monster Hunter, talk about some of their memories, and of course also for those of you guys that might not have heard of them, this is obviously a great introduction for you. If you've missed it in the previous episodes, you can always find them linked down below, but today this has been probably one of the most requested episodes. We are finally having a chance to sit down and speak to a good friend of mine, none other than Gaijin Hunter. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know if you guys have any questions or who you would like me to speak to next. Of course, if you guys want a chance to win the Spider-Man PS4 Pro, don't forget to enter the giveaway. And of course, don't forget to click that notification button so you don't miss any of our latest uploads. But let's not waste any time and let's dive in to the questions. First up, for those of you that may not know, I'm pretty sure by now everybody does know, but assuming some people might not do, then can you tell us who you are and what do you do? Sure. <laughs> uh, my name is Gaijin Hunter. I have a YouTube channel and I make videos pretty much almost exclusively about Monster Hunter, uh, basically focusing on tutorials and tips and stuff and how to play the game. Awesome. And of course, for those of you guys that are not already subscribed, then you can definitely find links to Gaijin Hunter's channel and Twitter in the description box down below. Definitely make sure you head over there. But talking about Monster Hunter, how did you first get into the series? So I've lived in Japan for 16 years, so like I knew that Monster Hunter was a big thing. Like you saw it on the trains, everybody was clawing and playing the PSP and all huddled together in the corners. And I never really had, I guess, friends to play with. So I never really got into the PSP or the Monster Hunter, but I remember I was listening to 8.4 podcast um, and there was a lot of hype in Japan about Monster Hunter 3G coming out on the 3DS. Um, and so hearing them talk about Monster Hunter and I think they were describing the uh, Jen Moran hunt or something like that and it just sounded really cool. I was really big into 3DS uh, The game was coming out. I said, okay, I'm gonna give this a huge shot And so yeah, I went out and I bought uh, the special edition. I bought the game and that's where I started with Monster Hunter was Monster Hunter 3G here in Japan It's kind of like really funny. I kind of remember in the train going to work and seeing people fight a Rathian and I remember just like peeking over and going what game is that? I was like, there's no life bar. Like how do they know that they're damaging the monster. What? What is that? <laughs> and little did I know that years later that would become a hook for me as well. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. So with that being said, uh, of course you've still been playing for quite some time. So do you have a favorite game in the series? And if so, which one? So I think every game, there's like one standout feature that I, if I was focusing on that at the ter period of time, I'd say, okay, this, like Monster Hunter World, the action and the, and the, the way the world intertwines with the hunt, it's the best in the series, but I think if we were to take it all overall, like if you're looking at execution, volume, end game, and mechanics, I'd have to give it to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. That I think is the pinnacle of everything if you look at it as a total package. Mm, yeah, I can I can definitely see that. I think that's that's probably a similar thing for me as well. There's definitely, as you say, there's aspects from either one, but for you is definitely as a package, really, really awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think World. I I'm not going to say the World isn't going to be the best because we still. I mean, it's just in its you know first iteration, so mm. it'll be interesting. I think it's got potential to, of real good greatness, but. As we know, we don't judge the Monster Hunter games based on the end game of the initial entry. Yeah. It's kind of the ultimate uh, one that we really should judge it on it, that merit. So I think it has potential, and I hope it, it shocks us. Definitely, definitely. So with that being said, obviously, you know, the, the core crux of Monster Hunter, we hunt monsters, we know this, right? But if you had to narrow it down to one core component, what do you think it is about Monster Hunter that you personally love the most? What's the sort of one thing that really keeps you coming back, that kind of hooks you in? It's not getting the attack decoration. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, the one thing, I mean, gosh, there's so much, but I, I would, and this is going to sound really abstract, but I think as an adult, and I think most, or even I think a young adult, um, I think people experience this as well, but it's really hard to come up with small tasks that you can achieve within like a few days or a week. So like you have a school project or you got work and it's just like, it takes you know a week a month or a year to complete something this game it's just like you can have the recipe of the weapon you want to make and the armor you want to make and then you plan it out you're right on the notebook i need five drops from this monster three from that and it's setting out the goals because the game doesn't really give you a goal it just says play and then you make your own goals and being able to complete those and then wear your trophy and visually get that gratification i don't know it's like to me, it's the experience of setting goals and completing them and feeling like you're progressing, but on your own terms, that just keeps me coming back over and over again. 
Fair, yeah, no, I can definitely say that. Yeah, it is, it is, there's definitely always something to chase in that, which is, which is awesome. So, moving on from there, um, you obviously make a lot of fantastic videos on YouTube, but what was it that prompted you to actually start making videos in the first place? So this is a good one, because I mean, I've actually thought about this, because I think there's a few different factors, but after I got into 3G, I was so hooked on the game, and I wanted to delve in deeper, that I started blogging, and there was like no one reading my blog. <laughs> so, it was just literally me an excuse for me to sort of research the game and to sort of compile it into something that I could understand. And then I realized that I really enjoy that. Um, and at the same time, uh, Shepard, a social dissonance, he was doing some videos and tutorials for 3 Ultimate. And I thought, well, it would be kind of neat if I tried video as a medium. So I think I was just capturing Monster Hunter 4 with my cell phone at first. Then I, I had, I think, 100 views. And I was like, whoa, like people really are interested and they want to see this stuff. So I invested the money to get a capture card in my 3DS modded here in Japan and decided to bring my love from the tutorials, which I had been doing for over a year, and then try it in video form. And I got, I guess it worked. Um, people loved the videos and it's just sort of taken off from there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's funny you mentioned um, Shepard as well, because <laughs> they were some of the first tutorials that I actually watched when I was sort of, when I was back when I was trying to learn how the game worked. Honestly, it's like I think I make the videos more for me than anybody else. I think it's a good excuse for me to go in there and dissect it, make sure I tried every combo path, make sure I tried everything else, you know, and it's fun for me. So I figure if I enjoy it, then I make a video and the fruits of my research, then we could all enjoy it then all the better oh yeah no definitely and i mean and that's that's the that's the ultimate goal i mean if you know true passion behind something is what people want to watch you know they, if they know that you are genuinely passionate about it as well then it's probably why people connect with it so much so that's that's awesome all right so moving on from there let's talk about some uh, some favorites now so first up if you had to pick just one what would you say is your favorite weapon type and if so can you share like a set that you use for that weapon favorite weapon type Mm, I mean, I use all the weapons, so I would consider myself proficient in them. Um, my, and my original main was Lance and Hunting Horn, but I gotta say, I'm gonna have to give it to Prowler. Prowler, overall, I think is my favorite weapon because it takes all those quality of life changes that you have in like Monster Hunter World, but it puts it into the old school Monster Hunter. It's quirky, it's cute, it's fun. I, I just love Prowler. It's I particularly like the guard type uh, because it's got the add up guard and I love the heal type because I can sort of keep up and heal the entire team while doing damage myself. It's kind of fun. I feel like I'm like the little feline maestro, like, you know, it's the same thing as the hunting horn. I feel like I'm sort of leading everybody on and it just feels good. Mm, no, no, fair, fair. And you, and you made like a load of like really awesome ones that you've been passing on the community as well, right? Yeah. So I have eight cats that I've been passing around. So if people are interested in getting into Prowler. Um, but they don't want to make their own build, even though it's a lot easier in, I'd say, Generations Ultimate than it was in Generations. Um, I do have cats like Gaijin and, and Yuna and uh, Sox and <laughs> Yuri and all these other cats, each one for each type uh, of Prowler that we've been passing around. So hopefully people can get their hands on it and give it a shot. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I, think I, I think I used the one you made for Steffi because it was Beast, Beast Prowler, and that was uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so... Moving on from there, um, talking about Monster Hunter World this time, if you could bring just one monster into Monster Hunter World, what would you choose and why? Just one monster. Okay, I, this is probably on the tip of everybody's tongue who's listening right now, but Rajang. Ah, uh, yes. Rajang's got to come out. Like, th there's something about Rajang as a monster just flat out, which everyone loves, and myself included, even though I hated it for a long time because I was really bad at it. But there's, I mean, it's... He's realistic, right? So I think visually he would work for the world of Monster Hunter and just the just I want to see him bouncing around and killing everybody. And if there's anybody who can do a turf war with Nergigante and pound him in, it's Rajang. And I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, I, I think I feel like he's one of those ones that would just win every turf war. And the fact that you can't run to a loading zone to run away from him, he'd be like, ha, gotcha. <laughs> That'd be amazing. So on that similar topic, assuming it's not the same monster that we just spoke about, what is your all-time favorite monster and why? I actually had a lot of fun doing a video about this, I think a year and a half ago, but I would have to say my favorite monster goes to the Bloodbath Diablos. Um, there's just something about the monster I just absolutely love. I giggle and I laugh and I scream out loud when I play against it, and even Yuna, my daughter, she gets into it. It's just, I like monsters that are like over the top, and just totally aggressive and owning their own concept and just when it goes into that transition phase where it's running around with steam coming out of its body and it's like 
one, two, three, boom, and then it blows up. Like just everything about it is just a spectacle. It's just so much fun. And when you learn its patterns, like being able to dance around that a kind of an aggressive monster, you feel really good as well. So I would have to say like, you know, visual, the, the music, the hunt, everything, Bloodbath is my favorite. Nice, awesome, fair enough. So moving on from there, a couple more things now. First up, do you have any really memorable Monster Hunter moments? It can be things like, you know, things that stick in your mind, whether it be like a really funny clip or something epic you've done, anything like that, that you just kind of look back and think, that's like a Monster Hunter memory for me. <laughs> there's a one, in, there's a lot, but there's one in particular that sticks out. And I'm not a speedrunner by any means. And I'm not, because I, I don't consider myself a fantastically good hunter, just proficient. Um, and I don't do a lot of challenges, but it was back in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Um, I think it was uh, Recon and Melf and some of the other guys that I played with. Um, they said, let's do Gogma, all of us naked with no armor. So we did a G rank Gogma naked, and I remember we have a clip on my, I think I tweeted it out, but there's a clip where I was manning the cannons and Gogma spotted me and did like that laser <laughs> oh, beam no. that blows up. And you and Melf captured it perfectly so you could see my body blow up and me fly off the platform with zero health. And then you hear Recon go, I got you buddy, and he pops a life powder and you can see my dead body bounce off the ground once and then it heals me right before the second bounce and I didn't cart. It was the most amazing thing. <laughs> it's just funny because he captured that perspective. Being able to, to have a money a moment like that, but to have it being captured um, from the right angle is just hilarious. Yeah, no, definitely, fair enough. Yeah, no, that was that's that, that was awesome. All right, so finally, to round things out, this is a question I've started, I started to like, I like asking people this one. So if you, if Capcom turned around and said to you, hey, you're in charge of making the next weapon that's gonna be added to Monster Hunter, you know, obviously as people, as someone that likes to learn other weapons and stuff, if you could make any weapon type, what would you make as the next 15th weapon, or should we say 16th, since Prowl is technically 15? Boomerang. I mean, it's I, I, I know we got Boomerang with the Prowlers, and maybe that's why I like it so much, but I think there should be a weapon that sort of splits the middle ground between a ranged weapon and a melee weapon, and I would love it to be a Boomerang, like a giant Boomerang that you can hit, you know, fit, you can hold it like a blade and use it physically, but also throw it. Um, just the idea of being able to, th like with the Prowlers, you know a monster's coming at you, you can throw a boomerang one way because you know that it'll hit it on the way back, and that's a mechanic that you don't have with the other weapons. It's always straightforward, you hit or miss. I think that would be a cool weapon, and I would love to see what crazy design they would come up with it. That, that would, I would, I would fully, I would, I, would, I think that might become a new main, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not charge blade? No, no. Oh no, no, no. I mean, maybe, maybe unless they introduce like a, a shield with it, then maybe charge <laughs> charge boomerang. The charge bow or the charge boomerang, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. So super appreciate you taking the time to uh, to chat. It's been it's been awesome to to catch up and of course hunt and and chat monster hunter. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I'm I'm obviously a huge fan and friend of yours. So it's it's great that you're doing this series. I've been enjoying it a lot. Nice. Awesome. And of course, for those of you guys watching, don't forget, you can find links to Guys and Hunter's YouTube channel and Twitter in the description box down below. Definitely go and check over. I'm sure most of you guys subscribed already, but if you're not, hit that subscribe button, check out his videos. And with that, I'll leave you one party note. <coughs> Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check out some more awesome stuff from us here at Arix Gaming, then you should definitely try to catch 269 and Paradise Central streaming six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. They play a wide range of games, and what's more, we also have the end game store. By watching their streams, you earn currency, and you can redeem that currency on the end game store for really cool prizes. Those can range from things like games, comics, and figures, all the way up to controllers, capture cards, and even consoles. So definitely drop by and become part of the community. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you're subscribed and be sure to click on that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. You can watch more videos by clicking on the options here. But once again, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.